Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to do something kind of fun and laid back. We're just going to go through my computer, and I'm going to be talking about all the different apps I currently have installed on my Windows 10 machine, and I'll be briefly explaining why each of those are installed, and we'll be skipping over some, the ones that I don't really use at all, and just focusing on the apps that I do. So, uh, getting started, Google Chrome up here as a web browser, uh, if you haven't already heard of any other web browser besides Microsoft Edge, uh, because for some reason you use the default package of Windows 10, um, Chrome and Firefox are alternatives to Microsoft Edge, and they're really solid ones. I haven't quite decided which one I like better, but uh, for browsing the web, installing plugins to help you browse the web, and also being able to log into your Google accounts and manage some of the data straight in your web browser without going to something like gmail.com. Uh, it's a really good web browser, and you can't go wrong with it. Next up, Mozilla Thunderbird. They're the same people who do make Mozilla Firefox uh, that I basically just mentioned. Um, but Mozilla Thunderbird is an email client. So if you have multiple email addresses, like I do, and you want to manage them all in one place, then uh, Mozilla Thunderbird is a great tool for that. You just add them. And, um, to you, Mozilla Thunderbird, and you kind of centralize their control. So you check out the email with one app, with one button. Basically, you hit the Get Mail button. Um, and you can add new ones pretty easily. It's a completely free app uh, and relatively easy to use. I think I even have a couple tutorials about it on my channel, kind of thing. But Media Player Classic, it's one of the two me media players I actually like to use. The other one being VLC, which I'll mention a little bit later as we get down to those Vs. Uh, Media Player Classic is uh, its pretty nice. I, I think I like the hotkeys that you use to make it full screen. Um, sometimes things play back better in Media Player Classic than they do in VLC Media Player. Um, it, it's kind of split between those two. So like if ever I have a problem with one, I'll use the other one. And just because it's a Media Player Classic doesn't mean that it's like way out of date. It's just using kind of a classic UI rather than the newer versions of Windows Media Player. Um, I like the classic skin better. So GIMP, uh, that's a big one on my channel. I, I mean, <laughs> these are the most used apps actually, it's no wonder. Um, so GIMP is the uh, free, the best free image manipulation program. GIMP literally stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. Um, obviously, if you go through my channel, I have tons of tutorials on it. It's really solid, very comparable to Photoshop, but I would say it's a little harder to pick up. Maybe the interface is a little bit nicer, but in terms of the functionality that's available, it's pretty much right up there, just as good. Um, and it's free, by the way, which is definitely a huge advantage over Photoshop, which I think is something like uh, 20 bucks a month for the CC version. Uh, it, well, with the other apps. Um, I think Photoshop and Lightroom is just $10 a month. Okay, PDF Element Pro. So I did a paid review on this uh, sometime in the last week or so by Wondershare. Um, it's a PDF editing tool, so you can create new PDFs with it. You can uh, scan in uh, PDFs, like as physical written documents, and add them in where uh, all the fields can be scanned, the data in those fields can be scanned. The problems I was having with it is that sometimes the scanning doesn't work so properly uh, currently, but I did let them know on the forms to go ahead and fix those things. So I think PDF Element 6 may be a pretty good uh, tool in the future once they get the scanning to be perfect. Uh, the interface looks very much like Microsoft Word, and I, I don't think it's bad. I just think the scanning needs a little bit of work. Uh, OBS Studio. So this is what I'm using to record uh, this video. Very like right now down here, you can see it open. Uh, OBS Studio is a free video recording tool, so you can record webcams, you can record uh, screencasting. Obviously, that's what I'm doing right now, and you can record games, which is probably what a lot of people use it for. Um, you can also add in web-based sources. So if you have a URL that may display something on your stream or on your recording. Uh, you can do that in OBS Studio. It's a really solid tool, kind of like the free open source version of XSplit, which I also have on the computer, and we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, next up, 7-Zip. This is my choice for managing file archives on my machine. Um, so 7-Zip is free as opposed to WinVar. Uh, WinVar, if you have it installed, you probably know that it always has those annoying messages like, uh, well, it's a free trial. So after 40 days, you're supposed to pay for the, the new version. It's not really that it's annoying so much as it's like, hey, you know, this isn't a free software. Can you go ahead and pay us? But 7-Zip is completely free. So if you kind of want to be 
a little bit cheap but get a really good tool, uh, 7-Zip is a great option there. And not sure if it's available on uh, Linux. I think it might be. Um, but definitely on Windows 10. Um, next up, Microsoft Access 2016 and the whole Microsoft Office package. Uh, I guess I'll only talk about it as one thing because, you know, there's like six or seven apps and that would be a lot to detail. Uh, Access is, of course, the database version of Microsoft. Uh, I mean, the, the database app for Microsoft Office. And Access databases are their own thing. They're usually used for small packages. So I don't really use Access that much, but Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, those are tools I use pretty often, and sometimes I make tool uh, reviews about them. It's kind of the paid version of LibreOffice. Uh, what's great about Microsoft Office is that it's got a really clean interface, and that um, in terms of the number of people out there using it, it's enormous. If you go into pretty much any Office environment, there's a really good chance any Windows machine they're going to be using Microsoft Office. Uh, very well respected. Uh, easy to use uh, as kind of the go-to app of choice. But if you want a free version, LibreOffice is good as well. Uh, Adobe Reader DC, um, forget what the DC stands for, but Acrobat Reader. Um, it's a tool for viewing PDF elements. Now it can't edit them like PDF Element 6 can. Uh, there is Adobe Acrobat, uh, the version that can edit your documents, but that's paid. Any app that allows you to edit uh, PDFs is generally paid. Um, there's also the Foxit Reader Phantom PDF as a third option. Um, yep, uh, but it's a good app for viewing PDFs. Sometimes I've noticed though that the Adobe Readers uh, can be a little bit slower than Foxit Reader, and that's normally why I like to use Foxit Reader instead, but I have them both installed. Uh, Adobe Creative Ca uh, Cloud, it's just part of the uh, Adobe uh, CC package. Uh, I forget what it's for. I think it updates your apps or something like that. But um, more importantly, let's just talk about the other apps. So Lightroom, I actually haven't gotten around to using much, but it's, it's kind of a companion to Photoshop uh, for editing photos. Uh, Photoshop, of course, you can use it to make thumbnails. You can use it to edit photos. You can uh, basically any kind of art stuff, you can do it in there. A lot of people use it for web design and that sort of thing. And then Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2017. Um, I kind of I don't like how the Adobe apps take a little bit more system resources, but um, Adobe Premiere is pretty much the best video editor I've used. Um, it's really solid. It's got a good interface, and uh, basically anything you want a video editor to handle, it can go ahead and do it. Uh, I have been keeping an eye on other apps like Caden Live, but uh, they're just not quite there at the level of Adobe Premiere yet. So uh, that's why I'm still using Adobe. Um, Akasha, uh, that's actually interesting. It, I've, I've only briefly touched on it, but it's like a, uh, a blogging kind of platform that's... Uh, it basically uses the same kind of technology, the, the blockchain that uh, Bitcoin does. So instead of uh, being purely like a finance tool, it's a tool for basically having um, your blog content or your social media content on a cache of being spread across um, all the computers across the world that are connected to the network. So it's basically, you can't take down anything there. It's uh, kind of a free speech platform where it uh, protects the content because it's all caught up in the blockchain. Um, probably a little complicated to go ahead and explain that right now, but uh, I was just trying it out briefly. I haven't really uh, used it too much, but the concept is interesting. Uh, Avira, so uh, a Avira system speed up I'm uh, currently using as the tool for cleaning up the PC, making it running a little faster. Not actually sure exactly how much effect those kind of things uh, actually have on how fast your machine runs, but uh, kind of makes me feel good a little better. And I, I think the Avira version is better than something like Iolo System Mechanic, which I also recently reviewed on the channel. Um, currently, I'm using Panda Antivirus instead of Avira. I was previously using Avira, but uh, it's kind of heavy, and Panda's pretty light. And actually, now that I think about it, um, since I've started using Panda Antivirus and I turned off the news uh, and the settings for that tool, um, haven't gotten another pop-up since, so it's supposed to be lightweight and doesn't annoy you, so that's good. Um, let's see, Battle.net for games, uh, Blizzard Entertainment, stuff like Hearthstone, uh, pretty big into that, and that's just a client for connecting to those. Uh, let's see, da, 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 CC Cleaner, another tool for cleaning up your computer. This I like to use for registry, um, basically fixing any registry errors and making a backup that I save to 
like the C drive, and um, also for clearing up junk files on your computer. It's really good for both of those. Uh, but that's basically all the freed version does, but that's all I need it for, so cool. Uh, CyberGhost 6, that's the VPN I like to use, so a virtual private network. Uh, if you ever want to hide your IP, pretend you're in a different country, uh, get around blocked services, uh, or encrypt your connection as you browse the internet, um, it's a good tool for that. And um, even the free version has, uh, let me think about that, I think it has unlimited bandwidth. Uh, you just have to wait in a queue to connect. Uh, currently I'm using the premium version of that. Dolphin, it's an emulator for GameCube or uh, Wii games. I installed it, but I haven't really used it. Um, let's see, Excel, GOG. Uh, GOG Galaxy is kind of like Steam, kind of like Battle.net. It's another manager for games. Um, G directory Opus, okay. So Directory Opus is like a replacement for uh, the Windows Explorer. Um, I'm not really sh I mean, I've been using it, but I'm not exactly sure what my overall opinion of it is currently. Um, in some ways it adds extra features, but in some ways it's kind of just too much. Like usually when you just want to browse files, that's all you want to do. And when you throw on all those extra tools to your file browser tool, Windows Explorer, it kind of becomes a little bit too much, um, but I may do a, v a review on the uh, pro version of that sometime in the near future if there's any support for that at all. Screenshot, uh, awesome tool for taking screenshots of uh, basically anything on your computer. Um, you can select sections, uh, you can take full screenshots, uh, pretty handy tool to have uh, boot up whenever Windows starts. Hearthstone, it's a fun trading card game, uh, one of the ones in Battle.net, Heroes of the Storm. Um, it's a MOBA game. I won't really get into what that is too much, but um, I guess the closest comparison would be something like League of Legends. If you've heard of that and you know what that is, then you know what Heroes of the Storm is. Uh, Hyvis Studios, uh, skip over that. iTunes, it's a uh, media playback tool. Um, they also have the Apple iTunes Store, so uh, probably if you're kind of a Mac user, that's uh, the kind of tool you use. Um, it's good in that it has like that direct connection to the iTunes store for grabbing podcasts and that kind of thing. It's a little bit heavier of a tool than something like VLC Media Player. I occasionally use it. Um, KL, uh, K, K Lite Codec Pack. Um, it's kind of between that and the CCCP uh, Codec Pack for which tools do you want to use to have on your computer in order to play back videos. But if you don't already have one of those, you probably want to pick one up because they uh, let more video types play back in your computer without erroring out. So it's kind of like all of the files that you need to be able to play those things get installed in the pack and then you're good to go for playing media back. Um, League of Legends, didn't actually know I had that installed, but uh, yeah, it's the MOBA game I was comparing Heroes of the Storm to. Uh, LibreOffice, mentioned it earlier. It's uh, probably the best free Office software out there, so if you don't have the money for Microsoft Office, definitely pick up LibreOffice. It's great. It has uh, pretty much all of the same tools. A little less crafty of an interface, and um, I think sometimes maybe they're a little behind because they're kind of you know, trying to emulate what Microsoft Office does, but in their own way. Um, yeah, but it, it's a really solid tool. I uh, can't really say too many bad things about it. Do, 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 do. Mozilla Firefox, uh, as I mentioned, Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, probably my two favorite web browsers. I use both. I don't know which one is better, honestly. Uh, Chrome's more popular, though, I will say that. Uh, Notepad++, it's like Notepad, but um, has more features. Uh, makes it a lot easier to make a formatted document than rather than just, you know, a random scribbles on a, a really blank Notepad, and it has extra menus. Uh, it is a tool that can be used for programming and that kind of thing, and it depends on how many plugins you want to add on to it, but mostly I use it for notes, you know, kind of as the name would imply. Um, okay, let's see, what else is here? Knox? Not actually sure what that is. Neverwinter Night Diamond? Um, pretty fun game. Uh, kind of an oldie, uh, Dungeons and Dragons type stuff, if you're into that. One of the games from GOG Gaming. Good Old Gaming, by the way, is their name. So, kind of implies they do a lot of old games, which is true. That's kind of what their business model was originally. Uh, let's see, OBS Studio, we already mentioned that. Uh, da, 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 da. Panda Antivirus, as I mentioned. Um, holding up pretty solid so far. Did a recent review on that. I would say if you're curious about antivirus, maybe check out that review. 
um, play online for playing uh, Final Fantasy XI, which is an ancient game. Um, still kind of fun, though. Um, there's Edda Stone, language learning, pretty cool. Uh, QB, Qubit Torrent, sometimes you need to download stuff, and peer-to-peer uh, -peer is a good way to do that. Uh, good for grabbing things like Linux distributions. Uh, probably don't need to explain that too much. Uh, <laughs> probably, like, if you're interested in torrenting, you already know what torrenting does. Um, StarCraft 1. Uh, Blizzard recently made that free. Okay, Steam games? Yep, I have a lot of them. It's true. Uh, let's see, is there anything else that's really relevant? I'll skip over the games at this point. That to do is task list manager. I don't think I actually had that installed. I guess uh, Windows went ahead and installed that for me. But to do lists and wonder list, uh, back about a year ago, I was reviewing both of the apps, and I think they're very comparable. Uh, you can look at my channel for the reviews on that. But uh, to do list and wonder list, if you're looking for a tool that basically allows you to set up like tasks that you need to do in a certain week and you have deadlines for them, it's a good place to add them all to. Uh, alternatively, if you are on Windows 10, you can just uh, use Cortana to create reminders. That's kind of what I've shifted to lately, just Cortana reminders, but Wonderlist and To-Do List are both pretty solid, very comparable, and they do have free versions. Uh, Unity Engine, uh, for making games, uh, kind of shifting away from that a little bit because it takes so much time and effort to do that. Um, did make a course on doing it, and I did release my game uh, Heart Battle, which is on Android, or if you go to itch.io, um, on Windows, Mac, and Linux as well. It's uh, kind of a heart battle game. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry. It's kind of a uh, bullet hell game. So Toho Project, if uh, you're curious about that, just look up Toho Project and you'll get the idea. Oh, well, sort of. Kind of like Toho Project plus Undertale. In fact, just Google the game and uh, you can see what it's about. I think I made a trailer for it. I hope I made a trailer for it. Anyway. Uh, da, 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 da. Visual Studio, uh, great app for coding. I like how it has a dark theme. Uh, it's basically, uh, when I'm using Windows, that's the tool I like to use for coding. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Um, we can skip over that stuff. Last tool is XSplit. So uh, on Humble Bundle, they were having a deal where you could get some tools on your computer, and I got a three-month... Uh, subscription to XSplit Broadcaster and XSplit Gamecaster. Um, similar tools, XSplit Broadcaster is much more like OBS, uh, Open Broadcaster software, where uh, you kind of have to manually set everything up and you can add images, you can add webcams, you can add uh, links, URLs from the internet. Um, basically, whatever kind of stuff you want to your stream, and then you can have multiple scenes set up and you can switch between them. Um, it's more powerful but it does require you to put a little bit more effort in getting things set up. Whereas XSplit Gamecaster, you just connect it to your Twitch account, uh, and then you basically hit go, and you start recording, you start streaming. It's like a quick setup for XSplit Broadcaster, but they are separate apps. Um, generally, I'd probably be more in the boat of using XSplit Broadcaster or OBS, uh, simply because I'm fine with having that extra layer of complexity, you know, being a computer tutorial guy and all. Um, but yeah, not, not too bad. Uh, they are paid, though, uh, as opposed to OBS, which is completely free. So, um, oh, and uh, face, face Rig, I'm not sure, uh, that must have been on Steam. So, Face Rig, it, if you've seen more of my videos on my channel, you know sometimes I use the uh, little dog that appears kind of over on the side of the screen. So, rather than use your webcam, you can use uh, basically 3D characters that track your face for movements. And it's pretty fun, it's pretty cute. Uh, I think recently I've kind of shifted away from it because I, I don't think it really adds too much to the videos. It does make things a little bit distracting. Um, but if you want me to bring it back, I mean, maybe shoot me a message, let me know. Uh, in any case, uh, that's pretty much what's installed on my computer that I'm actively using right now uh, on Windows 10. Uh, so I've been Chris. Thanks for taking a look at uh, basically all these apps with me. And uh, hopefully I've given you a couple ideas of what maybe you can install on your own machine. Um, so until my future video content, I will see you guys later.